How do I solve this using the PQ formula? We have a quadratic equation with complex numbers. We have x squared minus 2ix and then plus 2 minus 4i and that's equal to 0. Right, let's have a look. Firstly, let's review the PQ formula real quick. It says if we have x squared plus some coefficient p right here and then times x and then plus q right here and that is equal to 0, then in this case we can say x is equal to negative p over 2 and then plus or minus take the square root and then we do p over 2 and then square and then minus q. So in this situation, notice that we have a 1 right here, so the PQ formula works wonders. So how do we do it though? First, we see that the P right here is negative 2i, so let me just indicate that. That's the coefficient of x. And then the Q right here is just a constant term. We have 2 minus 4i. And now we just have to plug in everything into this right here and then work it out. And hope for the best because I don't want to have any uh, complex numbers inside of the square root. But we will see. So first, we know x equals negative p over 2. So here we have x equals negative p, which is negative 2i, and then divided by 2, and then plus or minus square root. And then we have the p over 2 again, so p is negative 2i over 2, but here we will have to square that. And then after that, we minus q, which is that, 2 minus 4i. All right, now let's just work this out. Right here, negative, negative is positive, and then 2 over 2 is just 1, so we have i. And then we have the plus or minus. And then right here, hmm, I think the inside is the trouble, right? I th think so. Let's have a look. Just the inside here, of course. Let me just write it down right here on the side. Negative 2i over 2 squared minus 2 minus 4i. Firstly, this and that cancel. Secondly, negative squared is positive. However, we end up with i squared. So this right here is i squared. So we still end up with a negative 1. And then right here, distribute the negative like always. So we have negative 2. And then negative, negative, we have the 4i. So this right here gives us negative 3, and then we have the plus 4i. So this right here goes inside of the square root. We have negative 3 plus 4i, and then all over. No, not all over. This is it, because this is not a traditional ABC quadratic formula. This is it. This is it. We took care of the fractions, all that stuff. So now it kind of like depends. Because if you have a complex number instead of the square root, you can simplify that. Yeah. So how do we do it? So now let's just focus on taking the square root of the complex number, negative 3 plus 4i. And I'll just show you guys the algebra way to do it. So to begin, I'm just going to call this to be a complex number, a plus bi. And then we just have to figure out the a and b. And a and b have to be real numbers. And now you might be wondering, why is this going to be a complex number? Why not a real number? Well, the key is, if somehow this turns out to be real, then in that case, that part will just be zero. The truth is, a real number is a complex number, so this right here is more general. All right, to continue, let's just go ahead, square both sides. That way, we get rid of the square and the square root, like always. Then we see negative 3 plus 4i equals, expand this, a squared, and then plus 2 times this and that, so it's 2abi, and lastly, we add this squared, so b squared, also i squared. But what's i squared though? Negative 1, yes. So this part is negative b squared. Now have a look. On the left hand side, we have a complex number. This is the real part, and this is the complex part. On the right hand side, we also have the real and the complex part. The real part is the part that has no i. We have a squared minus b squared. That's the real part. And once again, a and b have to be real numbers. And then right here, we'll just have plus 2abi. 
Now we just have to set the real parts to be equal, likewise the complex parts to be equal. So, first equation, a squared minus b squared has to be negative 3. So, let me just write that down right here. And then secondly, we can say 4, the coefficient of i right here, must be equal to 2ab, the coefficient of i right here. So, 2ab is equal to 4, just setting the coefficient equal to each other. Now, we have to solve this system of equations that's nonlinear. The way to do it is just do it by substitution. And I would recommend you guys to start from here, and let's isolate the b first. Let me divide both sides by 2a, so that we see b equals 2 over a after you reduce. And now put this to here, so we can get a squared minus parentheses 2 over a, and then square that, that is equal to negative 3. And now the rest is just algebra. Here is a squared minus 4 over a squared, and that's equal to negative 3. Look at this equation, let's multiply everybody by a squared so that we don't have fraction anymore. So right here we have a to the fourth power. And then minus, this and that is of course just 4. And then that's equal to negative 3a squared. Huh, how do we solve this? The key right here is that this is actually a quadratic equation, but in terms of a squared. What I, what I mean by that is the following. I'm going to keep this right here and now write it as a squared and then squared. I'll put this to the other side, it becomes a plus, and then we have 3a squared. And then here, we still have that minus 4, and that is equal to 0. Right here, we can factor it, and let's go ahead and do the tic-tac-toe method. So, I will see. Hmm. We need to have a squared times a squared, that will give us a to the fourth, good. What times will give us negative 4 together, they add up to be positive 3. Let's use 4 and negative 1, perfect. Does this work? Yes, because if you multiply this and that, we get negative a squared. This times that, we get 4a squared. Together, we do end up with positive 3a squared. So, from here, let's just continue. The first factoring is a squared plus 4, and then times the second factor is a squared minus 1, and that's equal to 0. So that means a squared plus 4 equal to 0, and the other solution is going to be from here, a squared minus 1 equal to 0. But this right here has no real solutions, because again, we are trying to get this into a plus bi form, a and b have to be real numbers. So we do not consider this right here. So this right here, no real a that will make this work. But for this one, of course, you can move the one to the other side and then take the square roots on both sides and then the plus minus. So a is plus or minus one. And now you might be wondering, why do we have two choices for a? Well, I will tell you, because when we take the square root of a complex number, we will end up with two possible answers. However, right here, if we start with just a equals positive one, in that case, we will get what we call the principal square root. So let's just focus on that. Well, we know b is equal to 2 over a, so that means b will be 2 over 1, and that will give us 2. So what we just did is the square root of negative 3 plus 4i, this right here is equal to 1 for a plus 2 for b. And of course, we have i. And this right here is the principal square root for this complex number. Earlier, remember, we have that plus or minus already, so I'm just going to put this, go back to what we have earlier. So as we can see, this right here is just equal to 1 plus 2i, and we have the plus minus right here already. And then of course, we still have the i right here. And now let's just work that out. We have two solutions. The first one is x equals i, and then let's put down the plus right here first. So we add, we have 1 plus 2i. So this right here, of course, it will give us x equals 1 plus 
3i, so first solution. Now, for the second one, we have the minus, so we have x equals i minus, and of course, distribute, so we have minus 1, and then minus 2i. And then from here, we see that x will be negative 1, and then i minus 2i is minus i. And then we're done, just like this. That's it.